And then you got a rare or hard to find Ontario Art Real Photo Postcard Aurora Ontario Super Fast Gas Station Pump Sign Blacksmith Shop. $163. And that was in the auction. 12 bids. Welcome back to Ask Some Postcards. Today, I got the agenda right down here. I got, got nine cards sold. We'll, we'll go through those real quick in the beginning and I'll just talk about each card and what they sold for. Not more about the price, but about what type of card and subject and stuff going on, what you want to look at. And then for the special postcard today, a special topic, gas station postcards. Anybody that's getting into postcards know anything with the older gas station, SO, Shell, and stuff like that, they do pretty well. And I'm going to dig a little bit into the details to pique your curiosity with those. We'll go through the sell through rate, the pricing, a little history about gas stations. And then I got a poll. This will probably trigger some people, it usually does. When a buyer buys multiple items, do you? And I'm talking about, you know, if they buy one to four cards, do you refund the shipping? Do you keep the shipping and stuff like that unless they ask? A lot of different people try to make money off of shipping and they do they don't say anything and then some people don't they refund right away even if they don't ask I'll let you know what I do and what most of the people do from the poll that responded then I got about four or five view about four viewer comments talk about things one person asked me if I do postcard shows so I got a little talk about that so you always want to stick to the end of the video when I do viewer comments these are questions or comments from YouTube, email, different places that I talk about. Let's go and get started on what's sold. So I sold nine cards. Now the sales have been like up, down, up, down, just all over the place. So I'm just kind of going with the flow, whatever happens. People are saying it's eBay glitches and stuff. But the people out there talking about eBay glitches and uh, how they're doing their software on the eBay site and they're making changes and not testing it but then they're they're the ones that are going out there buying buying and using this new software that is really buggy and then defending them saying that hey it's new software it's a thing so eBay is doing something and the other people so they're, they're talking out of both sides of their heads and I don't even listen to it because I understand the development cycles and changes can affect things but is it affecting my business? Well, I think it is, up and down. But overall, I'm maintaining. Everything's selling just fine. Not overtaxing, not too much to do. And I got money in the bank. So, let's see. The first one sold was an Australian postcard, Avalon Beach, Sydney. And this sold for 475 It's just a beach scene in Australia. I don't do many foreign cards, but I do post things like this. Pan Am. That's an airline that's no longer around stuff like that on there and then sometimes I'll call it out in a picture but Australia I, I send a lot of postcards to Australia 475 next one is a ship this is a monitor it means it's an older boat and it's the United States monitor Nevada it's one of those tinted card divided back cards unposted and that sold for five dollars next person bought two of the ship cards that I have. This is the USS Valley Forge LPH-8. It's an amphibious assault ship, former Axis class, fast attack carrier. So he bought two of these and that's what it looks like right there. I'm posting it. This is from a publisher. They, they bought these cards and it's up in there. I have 371 of these left in my box there. So he bought two of these for $9.50. Next one is tunnel, tunnel number 30, Moffat Road, Colorado. It's a train tunnel. And this is a, on, on by the back, train tunnel. Sold for $4.75. This one is Camp Arrowhead Hunt, Texas. This is a camp, one of those camps. Anytime you get kind of camps, Boy Scout camps, camping, do pretty well. $4.75, unposted. Just a view card of the camp. And then this person bought two cards of the New Jersey. It's like a shadow of the New Jersey. And this is on thicker paper, and it's BB62. 
but that's what that is. And he bought two of them for nine dollars and fifty cents. Then one came in in the last minute before the video. I pulled it because I don't sell a lot of these cards, and I don't list a lot of patriotic cards anymore. This is not. This is kind of an arcade card, not really a postcard, but I put it in a while ago. This is the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Look at all the garbage on the floor. <laughs> Some reseller's office looks like that. But that's what it is. You got Ben Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, not for sure. Quincy Adams, maybe? I'm not for sure who all those people are. But it's got a bunch of writing on the back. And this person paid $4.75. That's been in the boxes for a while. But I sold nine cards for $44.48. And remember, I want to do 16 cards a day, so I'm 7 down. I want to do $80 a day, so I'm like 45 down, 40 down, 35 down. And then my average ASP, if you take 44, 48 divided by 9, only comes to 494. So what I'm selling is some lower value cards today, and my ASP went, dropped a little bit. But am I going to run out and do end and release and throw sales on, up my promoted listings, call eBay? No, it's just... It's inconsistent sales. It's part of the game of reselling. Some days you do good, some days bad. The other day I did, you know, I sold 20 cards. And then today I sold 9 cards. It's just whatever comes in. And with all the stuff I've been doing on the side lately, it helps me at the moment. And we're going into the rest of the year, and I'm for the year and for the month, I'm fine. I've met my goals. I'm about 3 cards two or three cards under my goal there I'm definitely over $80 and my ASP is still rising for the year so I'm not that worried about it looking long term but that's what's sold the SM postcards Kofi shop has a collection of postcard supplies to meet your reselling needs from protective sleeves to envelopes and tantalizing postcard lots we have everything you need to enhance your reselling experience but that's not all if you sign up as a member in either the white border or divided back tier you're entitled to an incredible 40% discount on all items purchased in the shop. Whether you're a seasoned seller or just starting your postcard reselling journey, this discount is here to make your reselling experience even better. Stock up on top quality supplies. Visit the SM Postcards online Ko-Fi shop today and transform your postcard reselling to the next level. To see more, follow the link in the video description below. Now let's get into gas station postcards. Gas stations, petrol, fuel, everybody knows what a gas station is and they're on postcards. The old tanks and stuff that you see on the postcards, the shell signs, the ESO, a lot of stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and give you some history on gas stations that I found. I have a fact here about the first self-service gas station and how many gas stations are out there. And then we'll get into some details about the cards that I found. The high, higher ones, the uh, average ones you'll see, and the sell to rate. And see what you think of these. Here we go. In the early 20th century, when cars were just starting to become popular, people faced a challenge. Where to get fuel for their vehicles? Sound familiar? It's like the electric cars today. That's when the first gas stations came into existence. They were first the first one was opened in St. Louis, Missouri in 1905. These early gas stations were quite different from what we see today. Instead of big modern structures, they were often small sheds with a simple pump and tenants would fill your car for you. It's interesting, I was at some training in New Jersey for a system for a week and I had to get gas in a rental car. I pulled up to a gas station, I get out and the guy says, no, I'll do it. I'm saying, well, what is going on? There's a little wood shack in between the pumps. Come to find out, you don't, you're not allowed to pump your own gas in New Jersey. You have to have them do it. I said, okay. So that's different. We've been pumping our own gas here for years in Illinois, and I think every other state. So if you're in New Jersey, they pump the gas. As more and more people start driving cars, the need for gas stations grew, just like the electric cars today. During the 1920s and 1930s, gas stations started adopting a distinctive design. Some had a cottage-like appearance, while others were shaped like animals or even airplanes. This was an exciting time for gas station architecture. The iconic design was associated, we associate with gas stations today with big signs and convenience stores began to emerge in the mid 20th century. 
gas stations became not just a place to fill up your tank, but also a spot to grab snacks and other essentials to go. Today, gas stations are an essential part of our daily lives, providing fuel for our cars, a quick stop for snacks and drinks. The history of gas stations reflects the changing needs and habits of society as cars became a common mode of transportation. From simple sheds to the modern convenience stations we see today, gas stations have come a long way in catering to the needs of drivers around the world. Entrepreneur, entrepreneurs seized the opportunity to promote their gas stations through postcards depicting vibrant illustrations or actual photographs of these roadside stops. These postcards served as a, both a marketing tools and souvenirs, capturing the spirit of a bygone era when road trips were synonymous with adventure. Over time, gas station postcards evolved, reflecting changes in architectural styles, fueling technologies, and so societal attitudes towards travel. Today, these vintage postcards provide a nostalgic glimpse into the golden age of road trips and cultural significance of gas stations in shaping the landscapes of transportation. So the first one was 1905 in St. Louis. I have one fact here. The first self-service gas station in the world, self-service, was opened in Los Angeles, California in 1947. It introduced the concept of customers pumping their own gas to reduce labor costs. And the idea quickly spread to become a standard practice in the industry. They use in technology and thinking out of the box to reduce cost. That's what the companies do today with technology. As of, just think, as of January 2022, this fact I found, there's approximately 115,000 gas stations in the United States. 115,000 gas stations. That's a lot of gas stations. So that's the history of gas stations. A little bit. Enough to tweak your curiosity about these cars. But do they sell? Always ask that question. I always ask it. Everybody does. Every picker does. They go out there and look at things. If I pick up this item, will it sell? Sometimes it does and sometimes it don't. But you need something to help you out. You just can't go with your gut all the time because even though it looks like a cool card, there could be millions of them out there. Or it's just a very common card. Or it's a harder to find card. People call them rare, vintage, antique, whatever you want to call it. I call them harder to find. But I use this little chart here. It has red, lighter green, a little dark green, and a dark green. The red, you, I don't pick up. Niagara Falls, Cypress Gardens, uh, Mount Vernon. Stuff like that I, I try to stay away from unless they're very unique and I take a chance on them. Zero to three percent. Four to ten percent is where I work. That's what I sell. That's what I do. Divide it back to chrome and current continentals and some of them like that. If they fall in that range, I get them for a good price, they'll move at an average pace. But while I'm doing that, I usually pick up some low ones because I think they're good and they're not. Or some of the low ones are not good. You always have that. That's the challenge. That's the fun of it. That's the gambling of it. But then you get into the 11% plus. Those are the Weechi Watchy Mermaids, the McDonald's, uh, Disney, some of the RPPCs. You'll find those in boxes as you're going through. People miss things. I miss things. You miss things. You, don't, you can't know it all, but this helps me out to know what to pick up. Or what it gives me an educated guess and a better chance of selling a 9% sell rate card over a 1%. Just because it looks cool and it has glitter on it, it's from 1908, it doesn't matter. When I, my wife goes to antique stores and I'm not with her, she'll sometimes FaceTime me and say, hey, I found some postcards here, and she'll show me them. But she says, well, this is from 1907. It doesn't matter. There's golden age of postcards from 1908, 1912, basically. Billions of postcards were mailed and bought and purchased. And it, there are just so many of them out there. That period doesn't matter what it was postmarked or anything. It helps, but it's it's the subject of the card, the condition. There's so many variables in it. But sell-through rate is one thing I, I use in my head. And how I calculate it is right here. I take the sold, I go into eBay, I just type in postcard gas station. That's it. Nothing fancy. I'm not looking for the last card. I just want to know what range it might fall into. Is it green or red? Or deep green and I click on sold which clicks completed for the last 90 days and it says a thousand were sold 
Then I unclick the sold, which unclicks completed, and I get the listed. 9,900 listed. So 10,000 cards, gas stations, and the title or item specifics. Times 100 is 10%. If you look at the chart here, that's at the very top of the high range, almost into the, the very high. So we're looking at a higher average card, is what I'm saying here. It's probably in that range. But you need to take and put it up against a few other things just to see if that 10% holds. Is, does it drop down to 5%? Is it just an anomaly? So what I usually do is I go out there and find like three other things in the same type of subject of a postcard just to give me a gut feeling, is it okay? So I went out there and I found postcard truck stop. There's not a lot out there. 22% though. So if you got truck stops, like an aerial view of a truck stop and it's got the sign in the trucks, it might be something to make sure you get in the title and item specifics. 22%. Kind of an outlier. Then you got gas stations, 10%. But then you got service station. Some people call them service stations because years ago they used to service your car, put oil in it and stuff, wash your windows. They have a team of guys going on it. Everybody's seen those commercials. 4%. And then rest areas along major highways and stuff is 3%. So I, I would say 10% would drop down a little bit. Depends on the brand of the gas probably. Like Essel, as you're going to see, Shell, and some of these Marathon, some of these other ones might do better. It, so there's a lot of variables. So I would say this is a middle high card on the chart here. I wouldn't say it's very high, but they're real photo postcards and stuff like that. You can throw this out the window. Those sell themselves. That's a different model in my eye. Those are higher priced cards, harder to find, one of a kind a lot, and they're going to sell themselves and have their own little model. This is for the average cards. Like from divided back to Chrome is what I do. It's where I think this works for me. So I would say this is an 8 to 10 percent card. It's in the high. It, it's where it stays average, what we'll see. But then I go out there and I look in the eBay, worth a point, in different places, and I want to find the consistent higher watermark. Not the really high 15,000 ones and all this other stuff. I throw those out. Those are unique ones. So if I kind of go down until I start seeing a common higher watermark. And I call them extreme pricing. Because you're not going to find them every day. You're not going to sell them every day. But when you do find them and sell them, it's great. So I found three here of the extreme pricing. This one is a Texarkana, Texas, Radcliffe, Texaco service gas station vintage postcard. Title just doesn't read like... I, I like titles that read. That's the way I decided to do my not keyword stuff and all that stuff. But look at that. It's a kind of a grayed out black and white gray card. $166 and this was an auction. So he went to the in an auction, got four bids and got more than one person going at it and got $166. So putting things in auctions will bring it higher sometimes if you get more people going after it. If it's just one person, it's a buy it now to me. I don't do a lot of auctions. I don't like the maintenance of it and stuff like that. So $166 for a Texarkana Texaco. And then you got a rare or hard to find Ontario Art Real Photo Postcard Aurora Ontario Super Fast Gas Station Pump Sign Blacksmith Shop. $163. And that was in an auction. 12 bids. Nice looking card. That's a real photo. A postcard California Fred's Place, American River, Highway, Lake Tahoe, Shell Gas Pump. $127. And that was not an auction. That was They took a best offer, so they probably took $110, $115. So over $100. So if you look at this, on here, you're talking $100 to $130 average. Maybe $150 for these harder to find one of a kind, maybe sometimes gas stations. So it's something you don't want to pass up. And and sometimes you got to look a little closer at them to see what's in the picture. But these ones are sticking out pretty good. The bottom one is a little more elusive. It looks like a view, it would look like a view card or a campground or something, but it's got that sign stick, sticking there that would catch your eye. So you got to kind of get experience in doing it when you're looking at postcards, what to look for in gas station, gas pumps, gas signs is one. But then you get back down to earth, you go to average. Things that you're going to see every day, things that I sell every day or find and stuff. And 
a lot of postcard sellers price up gas stations. So you're going to pay a little bit more than 25 cents, 50 cents sometimes for them. But it, you know you can get a little bit more out of them. This is three here I found that are your higher average cards. Not your high extreme, but your ones the higher end of what you're going to see every day. There's a lot of them that are below this. And those are average cards, but I like to go and see what the watermark is. So I, I went from the 150 down, 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 until I started to see a consistent thing in the comps. And this is what I found. Here's three. Roadrunner Retreat Standard Gas Station, Route 66. That's a key word. Amboy, California, vintage, 1960s. $52. Three bids. Big old sign there. Someone took dirt on the ground. $52. Next one is a real photo postcard of Waynesville, Missouri, Route 66. Again, Route 66. Gas service station. Tow trucks. It's got tow trucks in there. I did a video about trucks. And those specialized trucks, tow trucks, garbage trucks, water trucks, those are disposal trucks. All these different things. Bakery trucks and stuff like that. Our specialized trucks are a huge draw. $50. And they only got one bid, so that's basically buy it now to me in an auction. It didn't go any higher, but the tow trucks and stuff, would he have got that if he did best offer? Would he have put it up for 50 Whatever you're thinking. But not, still not a bad card. And then down at the bottom is Stone... Stonesboro, Pennsylvania. Clark's Model Service Station. 1920 Sterling Gas Station. Rare. You can throw that word out. And then they got two bids for $40, $43. So they had two, two people bid on there and got $43 for that card. It looks like a white border card. So if you look at all these, you're averaging $40 to $50 on the high water mark for gas stations. You just kind of know what to look for. Not too bad. So you want fuel stations, service stations, gas stations. Take a look at those. They're going to put a little bit more money in your pocket. They might sit a little bit, but you can try auctions with them, as we've shown here, or you can do buy it now. It's whatever your business model is on there. But I, I usually don't pass up gas stations. I don't find them that often. I'll find them in lots more than anything because people pick them out. They're just, especially Route 66, I'll pick up. Because I'm not, I'm about 45 minutes, 40 minutes east of Route 66, and Chicago is where it starts and it goes through. A lot of the roads not there anymore, but over here there's some pavement and stuff still out there. So, and one of my friends runs a Route 66, like thrift store, antique mall over there. It's called Route 66 Antiques. It's in Wilmington, Illinois. And I see him at the auction stuff, Randy. And he used to, I think it used to be an old grocery store, but it's all got a glass front and he's got all these different booths inside. It's called Route 66. Uh, antiques, I think it's called. But the, that's gas stations. I call them gas stations. What do you guys call them? Fuel stations, service stations? Doesn't matter. They all sell. Who knew? Now we're going to get into this poll. And I said this is probably, probably triggers some people on there when I do polls like this. Because people are adamant on what they do in this part of their business or whatever. But you got to have some kind of a process in your business to say, what do I do this? If you do it one time, don't do it next time. Do it one time, do it next time. It just causes more animosity and I don't know what the word is. But it just, it's, it's not how you want to run a business. You got to decide what you want to do. And I'll tell you what I do. So basically, I put the poll out there and said, when a buyer buys multiple items, do you? I probably reworded this 20 times because I just wanted to trying to get it in your head. In my head, what do we do? So what do you do when people buy one, three, four, five, six cards? Do you combine the order and offer no refund or discount for combined shipping? 17%. So that's the second highest. Or do you combine orders and offer refund only if buyer asks? Only if they ask. I hear a lot of people say, if they ask, I do it. If they don't ask, I don't do it. 9%. That's the lowest one. Always send a refund discount on combined shipping. 59%. So six, basically 60% of the people say yes. They're a good seller. They're 
playing on a level ground. This is what they do. And the other is 15%. Me, if someone buy, I have free shipping and volume discounts on all most of my postcards. The higher end cards that are over eBay standard envelope limit of $20 or $50 for the order, I have calculated shipping on. The Halloween cards, some real photo postcards and stuff like that. The higher that are over twenty dollars, I those if someone buys multiple of those and I put them together, I will refund if it's calculated shipping. But free shipping with a volume discount. People ask me. I just had someone the other day come in and say, "Hey, I see you got a lot of Haiti cards. Can you put them all together and reduce the shipping?" I just told them you can search for our store with the word Haiti and find all the cards, buy them, and then we got a volume discount up to fifteen percent. Haven't heard a word from them, so I'm not gonna run around and pull all the cards, put a lot together, and hoping this guy buys. I did that years ago and I got burned a few times, so I don't do it. Go buy what you want. We have a volume discount, so you can get 15% off, and that reduces the shipping. That's what I do with the free ones. The other ones, I don't care if they ask or not. I don't. To me, shipping, I don't play with shipping. I don't go in and do all this stuff about flat rates and all this other stuff. It's whatever it costs. And I do keep the discounts because that pays for part of the pricing plan. If I gave the shipping discount to the people, then I'd have to raise my price. It's just a cost of doing business. You can't give it to the people and not put it in your price. You're giving stuff away. It, it, it doesn't make sense to me, but shipping isn't something I look to make money on. It's just another expense that you need to manage. You don't want to be... Uh, $4 postcard and put $5 shipping on it. No one's going to buy it. They might sell, but very rarely. So I see a lot of people, they'll put $3 for a postcard and $1.50 shipping. I just put it all in the price years ago. It's pros and cons of each one. I just do free shipping. It makes it easy for me. It's just the way everything is. I'm not going to go back and change all these listings just because someone said it's better that way or this way. It, it, when people look to buy something, I know when I go on and I look to buy something, I see something for $50, I check the shipping and see what they're going to charge me for shipping because I've got burned a few times at checkout and it's $20. You know, they're playing games and stuff. It doesn't cost $20 to ship something from Kansas, Missouri to Illinois. But they just wanted to show the price cheaper to try to trigger you. So I would cancel the order or not even buy it. I'd go find something else. So people combine the two. So you don't want people to think. They don't want to think when they're buying things. When they're scrolling through their phones, you want them to stop. It's all free shipping. Some people don't understand free shipping. But I don't play on that. It just makes it the same across the board for me. Now, I do make money if someone buys three cards and I got free shipping and my discount, buying discount, I will put all three in an envelope and they'll go for one ounce, 68 cents, 68 cents, I think it is now. Oh, I forgot. For eBay standard envelopes, so I got 68 cents for each card, and now I'm only using it once. I give a little bit back, and I keep some. So that's how I can keep my prices down, and I tell people that. I'm not going to refund you some that's free shipping and give you all that money back, because overall, that's why I can have a little bit lower price is the overall. I don't look at each card and each sale. I look at the month, the quarter, six months, nine month, year. How am I doing? So I, I do give it back. And if they ask or they don't, if they buy higher, if there's someone bought five lunch boxes, I'm going to put them all in one box probably. And I'm going to re refund some of the shipping to them on there. Now you do get hit with final value fees and that one time 30 cent charge so I make sure I get that back when they buy five things I don't give that back to them but some of the shipping I do now in Ko-Fi if it's over two dollars or so if it's excessive because Ko-Fi doesn't have all the rules that eBay has so I put it on there and if it's excessive I'll refund through PayPal on there a lot of people say why why'd you refund me you should have kept it no it's part of the deal the less you got to pay for something the more you can make if you sell it and that's what Ko-Fi is for resellers but I got six comments here from people. That dude said, if the refund is more than $2, I send the refund. When the shipping costs more than what a buyer has paid, I cover the shipping cost. He has a set rule. Boom, boom. No thinking. That's what you want to have is processes. This is what we do. This is how we do it. So when people ask, 
what do you do? It can't be on a case by case basis. It's going to drive you crazy, and and you're not really managing the business. I don't think you're just saying, well, I've got a slow month this month. I'm not doing shipping. Next month you do very well. Yeah, I'll give shipping out. I'm doing well this month. You just come up with a a rule in your head. This is what I do. Thanks, that dude. And then fill up binder bags. I don't charge for shipping, based in part on Mark's practice. Oh, he's doing what I do. I personally think people should pay for shipping, but it saves a lot of hassles and people love it. Yeah, you got your pros and cons with it. I, I try to show you what I do, not saying it's the right. You can do it any way you want, how you run your business, but I say do it consistently so you're not running up and down. Sometimes, if you're a feedback person, if you worry about feedback, if you have three orders and you don't, and they didn't ask for a combined shipping and you didn't refund, sometimes they'll come back and throw a neutral or a negative in there saying they didn't combine shipping, even though they didn't ask. Then try to get that removed. It just causes more hassle. It, now you're doing more work. You've lost all the money you've saved because you're spending time there because you do make, your time is worth something. So I don't play with that. I, I don't deal with that. So thanks, Philip. And then Goot gutted. If they ask, yes. If they don't, no. If it is a large order, I upgrade to shipping. Any more ground advantage or priority? Ground advantage is a great thing. So if you're sending stuff out priority just because they paid a little bit more, it's not going any faster, I don't think. Unless it's far away or whatever. I, st I do ground advantage and everything. Now, during the holidays, I used to do priority all the time. At one time, when they had the big problems back with and stuff, I just went priority on everything in the toilet. It didn't matter. People still bought it. But he has a set thing. He says, if they ask, yes. If they don't, no. And then he'll upgrade to shipping. That's what he does in his business. There's pros and cons to it. Thanks, got it. Three Boilers says, buyers love receiving shipping discounts after purchase. Perception is reality. Yeah. It just saves a lot of hassle down the road, I think. I, I make money on the item. I don't make it on the shipping. I want to pay for my boxes, my tape. All of that stuff's figured into what I buy cards for. And that's some other things I, I sell. I don't spend a lot on shipping supplies. And I use a box for everything. I don't think I've used a poly, poly mailer that often. I used to with postcards. Now I use boxes because I don't want to deal with all the garbage with postcards saying it's not a flat and stuff like that. I just get the little white boxes. And down in the video description, everything I use should be in there, links to what I use. If you see something I use here and you want to know what it is, just send me a message and I'll let you know. Uh, email or whatever. I'll comment in here and I'll, I'll send you a link to it or whatever. I'll point you to it. But in the video description, I have a lot of stuff in there. And I'll probably do another video section where we go through that again because a lot of people are new here or just forgot that it was there. But in video descriptions, a lot of YouTube videos, there's a lot of good information, a lot of deals and stuff. Thanks, three. Then Amy says, I consider the price of shipping and add it into the price of the card and offer free shipping. That's how free shipping works. As a new postcard seller, I really put a lot of angst in that decision. It's so gimmicky to me to offer shipping that's not really free, but I don't know. I may reconsider the decision. Absolutely, I have my doubts. It's not gimmicky. People are going to buy it or not. Amazon is free shipping. Everybody knows driving trucks in with a package in the back is not free. It's just the cost of doing business and stuff like that. It, it, it's a model. So you do free shipping or you don't or whatever. You just figure it out. I just don't like seeing a 470 put a $3 postcard and $1.50 shipping. To me, that looks more gimmicky. It's like because everybody knows what it costs to mail something. Why does it cost me $1.50 to mail a postcard? I put it in the price, say free shipping. Oh, this guy's pretty cool. So people think different ways uh, on things. So I... You, you're a new seller, so you got to come up with what you want to do. If you're doing this and this is what you like, go for it. And that's what it helps. A lot of people do the flat rate shipping on, on their stuff. The problem with that, like my toy store I had, I had six to 8,000 items in there. If the post office went up in pricing and I had flat rates, I had to go and change all that stuff. With calculated shipping, the price goes up and down, and I don't have to worry about it and stuff like that. And there's a price increase coming up. I don't know if they did it yet by the time this is recorded, 
but they're talking about trying to get 10 cents more on postcards. I'm not really that worried about that this year. I've taken increases over the last few years. I'm doing okay. I'm buying cards right. I have sales. I don't know if I'm going to pass any of that on. I mean, I still like being at 475 With tax, it's still under $5 for these average cards. The higher cards and stuff are a different deal. So I'm still on the fence for that. I don't know if I did it or not. I'm recording this a little early uh, before the summer. But are you guys passing that on to the customers or are you keeping it uh, the same? So, thanks, Amy. And then the Rebel Depot. I switched to free shipping on all my eBay listings several years ago. So there's no combined shipping, no worry about refunding. I was spending too much time answering questions about combined shipping rates, having to give credits if people bought multiple items, but paid separately, etc. Much more streamlined to have shipping factored in the price and have one less thing to worry about. Rebel, you, you summed up another reason why I do free shipping. I don't, you can't refund under less than a dollar on eBay, I think. So people ask me, well, it's free shipping, can I get a discount? No, we have volume discounts. That's it. Bottom line. Buy it, buy three, four cards, you get 15% off, there's your discount. I still got to pay the 30 cents for each item you buy, and all this other stuff figured in there. But he's right, you don't get all that questions and conversations. I hate messages. Most of the time, I don't even answer them. I just delete them because I'm not going to play their games. Someone asking for a discount on shipping on two $4 cards, no. It's got a volume discount. I have a little blurb I just cut and paste out there if I do see it. I, you know, these people, you can go buy it from somebody else is what I figured, because I don't want the baggage of all, like, they're going to get the cards and say it's not right and stuff. Not that often, but it does happen. But he's right. There is, by doing that, you do save a lot of that conversation. You can spend, I don't spend a lot of time on my phone all day doing offers, and I don't put best offer on things. I don't haggle for 50 cents. If people keep coming in, like those people that go around and try to hit everybody, will you take $3.50 for this? Would you take... 50 cents off of this. They're hitting everybody. After a while, if I keep seeing the same person, I block them. Now, blocking people on eBay doesn't stop them from buying stuff in your store. They can come in as a guest and still buy. You're just hitting that one ID. So, you just want to nip it in the bud and not take up your time. So, time is money, and people need to understand that. Otherwise, you're going to be on your phone all day and night and doing stuff. I, I don't do much on my phone. I could just see what's sold or if I'm out or something like that, I'll see it. But that's the poll. Thanks everybody for participating. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the little bell thing and over in the corner. It's the best free thing you can do for the channel is just subscribe because it opens things up for us and gets it out to more people. Viewer comments at the end. Remember, comments you put on YouTube are public to me. If you send it to email, contact postcards.com. It's more private. If I see something I want to use, sometimes I'll, I'll, I will ask you if I can use it. If, if not, then most of the time I don't. But if you send me something like that, I'll do it. If I do use something, I'll take the name off and I'll reword it a little bit. But email is one way. YouTube, it's public to me. I'm going to use it in a video if I can because everybody sees it anyway. And eBay, please don't try to get a conversation going on eBay because I can't reply with all the information sometimes I want to because eBay will not allow addresses, numbers, links. It's just, I don't want to get in trouble over there. But people submit these, I go in and I just randomly pull these. I'm not, nothing, I just go down the list and see if there's something that catches my eye. That's about it. So if I didn't get your comment, it's not because I didn't like you or whatever, it's because there's so many of them I, I just go through. But the first one I got is Lisa, Lisa, Lice Park Gardner, Lice Gardner, I don't know, sorry about that. Nice video, Mark, thank you, thank you for watching. I'm curious as to what prompted you to price that Graham Marius card up to $15 if you recall. I replied to her and this is the card here, this is the one, it's called Gunplit Trail. Look at that sign on the bottom right side of the card. That's what caught my eye. I didn't know Gunflint Trail. I didn't know anything about this. I, I just said, there's something different about this card. And it's that Gunflint Trail caught my attention. And I went in and comped it. And these were selling around that price range. So I went out and I priced it to what the market is. 
and it sold. So I, there's no special skill here. I, I didn't know anything about Gunflint. It's a chrome card. I, you know, if I didn't catch my eye, I would probably put it up for four seventy-five. But it, this one caught my eye because of Gunflint. I think the name Gunflint and that little sign there. But look at that. It's just an entrance to a road with a car. There. So someone lived there or whatever. But those things were selling. So I have. I guess I can't really answer that. It just caught my eye. And that's what it does. Thanks, Lisa. Hi, Mark. Always like your tutorial videos. I learn something new from everyone. I learn more than you do every time I put these together. And that's why one of the reasons I do it, because I just grow my catalog in my head and what's out there. My question is, do you ever set up as a dealer at a postcard show? Some people do just do eBay. Some do shows, and some do both. Thanks, Brian. No, I, I don't set up and postcard shows I don't get into all that anymore uh, with the show that's a lot of work a lot of people like it getting out see people they have a lot of neat cards I'm glad they do it but I'm just not a show person I did do them when I had toys and here's some pictures of of a bigger show that I did I brought over 1600 items to this show I had three people working with me that day my brother my father-in-law or two people my brother and my father-in-law came out and helped me with that because people walk away with stuff at the shows. So I had to have, they each got a shirt like this and they stood around and stuff and we, whatever was priced in there, it took me about three weeks to get ready for it. I had a U-Haul truck full and my trailer pulled behind the U-Haul truck and set it up and I bought two booths in this show. But here's the pictures. So this is just, and just setting up the racks was one or two hours getting all those up and this is all the stuff that I brought I had wrestling I had Star Wars I had G.I. Joe I had Dungeon and Dragons I had Turtles a lot of the stuff I sold while I was setting up the other sellers and then stuff and where do I pull I had storage units full of collections and stuff back then sometimes I had up to six or seven storage units at one time when I bought a lot of stuff this one here is just full of Star Wars I bought a collection of Star Wars that a guy collected for 25 years it filled up a 17 foot U-Haul truck the biggest truck I could find it was three hours away raining and we had to turn stuff away I just couldn't put any more in the truck we had stuff sitting in the front with me but that filled up like almost two and a half to three storage units and this is just some of the boxes and then I had other storage units like here that I stored the stuff in I had this one had 160 boxes and another one had a, like 120. They were, when I listed something, they had a number on the box and that's when I put on the custom label on eBay and I, I'd go over to the storage unit. So at one time, most of them I had two or three storage units and stuff. And I've, I've gotten rid of all those. But that, so I did the toy shows there. The reason I don't do postcards is I just don't want to do them anymore. I got rid of, stopped doing the flea market. A lot of work. This toy show I did very well, but not as well as I thought I would. A lot of people there, they didn't do a very well good job of advertising. At first the guy had me split up between, they had uh, doors in between my two setups. I said, no, this is on the map here, this is what I bought, so I had to haggle with that. And then during the middle of the show, they didn't have a lot of vendors to this done, so they didn't promote it well, so they didn't get a lot of vendors. They started calling their friends to come in and sell for nothing. So you're charging me, but not them. So it, that kind of soured me on doing shows and stuff. But I, this was, I think, one of the last shows I did. Just a lot of work, a lot of carrying and stuff like that. But I, I mean, I sold probably four or 500 items that day. And these, a lot of these were higher end stuff like that on there. But just remember, my eBay store was running with all the toys. And I had all this dock, plus I had the storage units full. I, it's just a lot of work for one person. That's why I brought someone in to help me that day. So no, I, I don't do them. But I'm glad they do, because I like going to shows. Then Blue Feather Ephemera. We discussed on my channel recently how some sellers get trapped in the race to the bottom. I doubt their stores survive for long. That's always been a thing with eBay. People race to the top, race to the bottom. They keep going, think price is a big thing. Price it to what you need. What is your bottom line for these cards that you need to make your margin? What is your margin? 45%, 50%. A lot of people say, I want to do 10 times my item thing. If that's your model, do it. If you can get away with it. But 
you got to come up with the processes and stuff like that. But people that race to the bottom keep going down. I'm not selling stuff. I'm going to drop my thing. Just like I had a nine cards sold today. I'm not going out there and drop my prices, throw sales on, just because I had one bad day or a couple days on there. But, yeah, racing to the bottom is not good because you end up doing all the work. You're dealing with the stuff. You're managing stuff. And then at the end of the month, you don't have much to put in your pocket. You get soured. You get, you just don't want to do it anymore. So sales, retail sales stuff, it's inconsistent. It's, there's not a magical, there's little pieces to the puzzle all around. You know, good photos, good scans, good price, shipping, one or two days, stuff like that. And have a quantity and variety. It's just all pieces of the puzzle that make up the whole picture. Not one of these things is going to put you over everybody else. You're not going to go from nine cards a day to 50 cards a day just because you dropped your price. There's so many dollar ninety nine ninety nine cent sellers out there. You got to build a reputation in your postcard store as someone they can trust, and they're going to come back and back and back and stuff like that. So thanks, Blue Feather. If you got a channel, uh, send me an email on what it is, and I'll stick it out there on the site and see if you can get you more. People watch. Next one, I was shipping two times a week for eBay sales. So he was shipping out of seven days only two times a week. And after hearing you say, if you have the time to ship within one or two days, try it or something like that. I say that all the time. I changed and went to shipping every two days. I cannot remember the last time I got a message from a buyer asking, did it ship like I always did before? Yeah, if you got the time, that's one thing you have total control of, is shipping. I have nothing but time. I'm retired, but I'm retired about five years. If I ain't got nothing going on, there's no reason that I can't ship in one day. Sometimes I go to the post office twice, and I'll put something in the mailbox, and uh, if I'm going out somewhere, I'll look and see if there's anything to bring to the post office. It's only 10 minutes away. I'll swing by, toss it in there, check my P.O. box, and get it out the door. But he's right. He's If a... If a Buyer has nowadays has to send you a message and say, hey, did you ship this yet? You might want to look at your shipping because that's one question you should not get is, hey, did it ship yet? You're already starting on the wrong foot, you ask me. But if you got the thing to do is shipping. I, I know some people, I hate shipping and stuff. It doesn't matter. It's the last part of the transaction that you're doing. You went out and you found all the stuff. You scanned it. You listen it, you comp it, all this other stuff. To get to one point is to pack it up and ship it to the customer. And nowadays with the mail up and down, everybody's crying about eBay standard envelope and then people contacting them and where's my card and all this other stuff. If you can get one extra day nowadays over someone else or get it into the system, you're going to have less time, like he said, people contacting you. All that stuff that people contact you and messages and stuff, they're not my friends. These are just customers. I'm not making friends here selling postcards. It's a transa transaction to me. I ship it out in one or two days. I'm usually same day or one day. I don't have a lot going on. With summer coming up, I might be doing some other things. I'll probably just put it in the mailbox every morning. During the winter, we're locked. I don't go anywhere. There's no reason that I, I can't ship that. But that's one thing that you can do over everybody else that are dropping prices, throwing sales on, and the list, all this other stuff, is see how your shipping is. So he was doing it two times in seven days. Two times. So Tuesday and Fridays, maybe? And people are asking him, did you ship it yet? That is one question I don't want to have. Because people are trained to look at tracking and stuff like that. And they're not going to buy from me next time. Because they don't, they don't want to have the conversation with you as well. And stuff. I, I, I've done things. I don't. When I was building the computer here, I didn't buy from eBay because I didn't want to deal with that. Number one. Number two, I didn't trust the listings and the stuff I wanted. I looked through a lot of it. I did a lot of research. About three weeks of it before I picked out what I wanted. None of it was eBay that I trusted, and that's because of all the stuff they put in their descriptions. The shipping wasn't clear, or the too much. And so I went to two re resellers or sites that I knew had refund policies and I could get things taken care of if there was an issue. And I did have one part that was bad. I had to send back. I did a refund. Boom, I got that money back the next day. If I had it on eBay, they would go back and argue and all this other stuff. I didn't have time for that. I needed to get this done. 
So you want to be that person that they know to get it done. If I bought one of those parts and I had and it didn't ship in three or four days, it's like, okay, this is not going to be good. It's going to put doubts in the buyer's mind. And mind. That's my opinion. You can do whatever you want. If you got a full-time job and you're on the road and you're only home two or three days a week, different story. Or if you got other things going on in your life, you're not home, yeah, you can set your there. Just know that everybody else is probably shipping one or two days. So it, it, there, but people have different circumstances. But if you want to do this, that's one of the things I always recommend is one or two day shipping. It's not hard to put a put it in your mailbox on the way to work. So if I, when I used to work a full-time job and I did reselling, I'd throw it in my car, and then on the way home, I would just run by, I took another road, and I would just swing by the post office, drop it in, and come home. And then a lot of times, if it wasn't raining and stuff, I'd put them out the door, and I had pickups. And I have a camera out there, and it alerts me if it was picked up or not. If not, my wife would bring it over there. But most of the time, I, I back then, I didn't have, I didn't have the quantity. I was more of a hobby seller. Because I had a full-time job. Gas stations. Anybody got a really good gas station postcards? Send them to con contact us at com for show and tell. And let us know what you sold it for. You don't have to tell us where or what you paid for. Just what the prices you're getting for there. So we got some really neat stuff in there. I really like to see people's setups. How do, how do they store their postcards, uh, their computer stuff? That's, it could be good or bad. It might get roasted or might not. But... I, I like to see people's setups. What do they use on their desk and stuff like that? You can clean it up beforehand or whatever. But I just want to see different things, how people do. I'm looking for new things to do all the time. So just send it there. Any, or you got some good cards you found. You got different stuff, something just weird out there or whatever. You had a real good sale or you went to an auction and you bought 10 boxes of postcards. Just throw them on a the table and send us a picture and tell us about it. That's what I'm looking for show and tell. Good send it in. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. I'll throw some more fish up here. I should have some new fish coming with summer coming soon. Bye.